We know from the Quran and the Sunnah that there is something called a ruh inside of us or a soul inside of us. I find it very interesting that all the major faiths without exception, they believed in the concept of the human soul. The ancient Chinese, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the Christians, the Sikhs, the Muslims, the Abrahamic religions, even the Greek philosophers, Plato and Socrates, and they're not even connected to a wahi. The ruh is something that permeates through all of human civilization. And of course, Allah mentions this in many verses. They ask you, what is the human soul? Tell them, the ruh is from the matters of Allah and you have not been given anything of knowledge except a very, very small amount. What made Adam, Adam was the ruh. Before the ruh, Adam was fashioned clay. Allah says in the Quran, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُ لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ After I fashion him, then I blow my ruh into him then prostrate down to him. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us that when Allah fashioned Adam from clean, he left the body there. And Iblis came and began looking at this empty vessel and he began knocking on the vessel. So Iblis is doing that to the body of Adam. Adam is not alive yet. And Iblis entered and exited from this shell. And he snorted and said, eh, anything that I can enter and exit from, I can control. And he felt he is better than Adam. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that when Allah blew the ruh into Adam, he blew from the top down. And when it reached the nostrils of Adam, it tickled the nostrils. Adam sneezed. And by that time, the ruh is reaching the mouth. And so even before the ruh is going to the body, Adam subconsciously, Adam says, Alhamdulillah. It comes from the fitrah. And Allah Azza wa Jal responds, Yarhamukallah. So the first phrase that our Lord said to the first man, Yarhamukallah, Ya Adam. And the Prophet said, the ruh continued to go down until it reached the hands of Adam. Before it got to his foot, Adam tried to get up, but he couldn't because the ruh has not yet reached down there. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, How hasty is man? You have no patience. Allah Azza wa Jal created a ruh and that ruh was blown into Adam. The ruh is not Allah, a'udhu billah. Adam does not have, a'udhu billah, divinity. Adam is makhluq. The ruh is makhluq. Anytime Allah ascribes something to himself, Allah wants to honor this object by saying, this is mine, my abd, my rasul, rasulullah, my house, my camel, my ruh. It doesn't mean, a'udhu billah, a'udhu billah, that a bit of Allah entered Adam, a'udhu billah. Adam's ruh was created directly by Allah. And as an honor to Adam, Allah Azza wa Jal, he blew the ruh directly into Adam. And Adam becomes the human being. Now, where does our ruh come from? Allah says in the Quran, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِن بَنِي آدَمَ مِن ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from the children of Adam from their backs, that He took their progeny. And وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ He caused them to be witnesses against themselves. We learn from the hadith as follows, that when Adam came down to this earth and Allah Azza wa accepted his repentance, we learn from our tafsir literature that this acceptance took place in Arafat. Some of the tabi'oon said this. One thing we know for sure from the hadith, once Adam's tawbah is accepted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rubbed the backbone of Adam. And from the backbone of Adam, he extracted every single soul that would be in existence until Qiyamah. Where was Adam's soul created? Up there. Who created it? Allah directly created it from there. From what? We have no idea. Where was our soul created? In this earth it was created. From what? From the backbone and we can say from the soul of Adam. And this is what the Quran is mentioning. وَإِذْ أَخَذْ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمِ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُ From the ظُهُور, from the backbone, from the sulb. The hadith uses the word مِنْ أَصْلَابِهِمْ Right? The sulb. What is sulb? Sulb is the backbone. Allah extracted from the backbone and from the soul every single soul that would ever be born until Qiyamah. We were born in Arafat. Our spiritual birth, our physical birth where our mothers gave birth to us. But our ruh was born in Arafat. This is in the hadith. And this ruh, it existed without a body. And the ruh then, the Quran tells us that, أَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ 
He caused these arwah to witness against themselves. And Allah speaks directly to the souls. And what was the question? Alastu bi rabbikum. Don't you know I am your Rabb? And what did we all respond? The Quran says, Bala. Yes, O oh Allah, you are our Lord. So how are the souls expected to know when there is no wahi, there is no prophet, there is no ayat at tadabbur? How are they expected to know? Response, the fitrah that Allah created the soul with. Fitrat Allah lati fatara nasa alayha. The Prophet said, He scattered all of these souls in front of him. Allah scattered all of these souls. How many souls? Every single one. We were there. And he then took the covenant. This soul, it remains in a state that we don't have any idea about until the next reference. And that next reference, Hadith in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He coagulates the creation of the fetus inside of the womb of the mother until finally a certain number of days pass. Then the angel comes with the ruh and the angel blows the ruh into the fetus. Who blew the ruh into Adam? Allah Azza wa Jal. Who will blow the ruh into us? The angel. And that is when the fetus takes on a living status. One final hadith inshallah. And that is the hadith in Sahih Bukhari. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the souls are like groups of armies or battalions of armies lined up. So the souls that know one another, they become friends. And the souls that there's nakara, there's not getting along. There's something that ikhtalaf, they have ikhtilaf. It's a very deep hadith and scholars have interpreted in different ways. Some of them have said that let's just understand this hadith as being from this dunya, not pre-dunya. And that some souls get along with other souls. And when the soul gets along with the other soul, the two bodies get along and they become friends and life is good. And some souls don't get along with other souls. And when that happens, they're not friends, they're enemies. And that's a valid interpretation. However, a number of ulama, they go even deeper than this. And this is very profound and Allah knows best. And they say, perhaps in this world, before this world, when the souls were all together, some souls became friendly with one another. And when they find themselves in this dunya, automatically they become friendly in this dunya as well, because they were friendly in there as well. And some souls didn't get along over there. And so in this dunya as well, when they discover one another, they don't get along. The wording allows for this interpretation. And subhanAllah, I have to say, Wallahi, it's so amazing that sometimes you meet a person for the first time and within a 10, 15, 20 minute conversation, you know, oh, this person I will get along with very well. And sometimes you will meet somebody for 10, 20 times. And yeah, it's okay. Salaamu Alaikum Salaam, good enough. How do you know instantaneously? This hadith tells us there's something that is beyond and that is something that the souls go back to.